Hello, let's learn about monopoly market structure and in this video we'll go over some definitions and, and such uh, things that are important because you may be running a firm making some business decisions or some policy decisions too. So we've learned about perfect competition just to recap that um, in a perfectly competitive market like the sugar cube market here price is going to equal marginal revenue which is going to equal uh, the marginal benefit which we measure as demand um, this is really good for consumers. Consumers get a low price. Consumers get uh, an identical product, something that they're looking to get. Uh, and so they're, they're uh, pretty smooth there. But for firms, firms, they don't like perfectly competitive markets because uh, they have to be a price taker. So whatever the price is in the industry, in this case it's 15, if, say, there was an increase in demand, this would push up the price. Um, and then the firm would, would make a profit, but this would attract new firms to enter the market, which would then increase the supply, which would knock down the uh, price. And so in the long run, firms in perfectly competitive markets uh, don't make a profit, economically speaking, right? So they end up, the average total cost curve is going to hit right where the price is, and right at its minimum is where marginal cost is. So uh, we end up with this long run equilibrium. So that's bad. So firms try to get away from this and they try to get some monopoly power, right? Much like the movie theater. The movie theater has some monopoly power. You've probably experienced it before. Uh, and at the movie theater, we don't buy as many goods as we uh, would like to because the price is a little bit higher, or, or in this case, a lot higher. And um, so we don't, uh, we, we as consumers generally don't like monopoly but the sellers definitely do, right? So it's this, this put give and take here. So, uh, you know, I've got four here. It says four, they're really five um, that we're learning about. But monopoly and monopsony are very similar, so I guess we could kind of put them together. Uh, but anyway, we've learned about perfect competition. Uh, next module, we'll learn about these two. And then this one, we're going to learn about these. What we're really measuring is, is there price competition? Is there non-price competition? Is there any product differentiation? Okay. Monopoly tends to be the simplest because uh, there isn't much competition. So it's a market where there's one dominant seller. So this gets into some legal arguments uh, that, that lawyers have, uh, firms have, the government has, consumer groups have, uh, about whether or not um, one single firm has some kind of dominant power over everybody else. An example here in Tucson is uh, Intuit has over 80% of the small business accounting software uh, sales and market share. Um, Intuit's argument is they're not a monopoly. Uh, the Justice Department uh, has from time to time looked at them. Do they have excessive power? Are they abusing their power? Uh, and so on and so forth. In the, in the 90s, there was a case where uh, Microsoft tried to buy into it, and they were told no because it would give them too much dominance uh, in, those, in those markets. So basically, a firm has total pricing power. A firm can charge whatever the demand is. They can't charge whatever they want, but they can charge up to where it hits the demand curve. We'll look at a graph later. So they are a price maker. The thing that causes this uh, is going to be called a barrier to entry. Some, something is stopping firms, new firms, from getting in the market and competing. And this is an important thing to think about for your paper for this class, but also uh, think about for your for your business. I mean, are there barriers to entry that keep out competitors? Uh, are you being uh, disadvantaged by a barrier to entry uh, to keep out, right? Is there something stopping you from getting in there, right? And, you know, for example, I'd love to run my own lottery, right? That would be great. It's a great business. Uh, you know, make lots of money off people who aren't that great at math. And um, the problem is there's a the barrier to entry, right? I would probably go to jail and the state of Arizona would would fine me or, you know, arrest me for, for doing that, right? Because there's it's not legal, right? There's legal barriers to entry. But here are some examples. Uh, one is private property. Okay, so if somebody owns a private property right uh, that you don't have, then that's a barrier to entry. Uh, resources, maybe you don't have the, the resources to, to make whatever the intermediate good is or the input so something stopping us there uh, the government can create barriers to entry sometimes for good reasons sometimes for questionable reasons and finally uh, somebody else can produce things at a lower cost okay so lower cost production might keep somebody out of a, out of a market okay sometimes these are super obvious right in uh, in Tucson here there's one electric power company it's pretty easy Tucson Electric Power. Um, sometimes not as obvious, right? So right now there's a battle uh, going on between uh, the European regulators, antitrust regulators, and the United States antitrust regulators. And um, 
the United States, we say Google is not a monopoly over over searches or uh, you know YouTube and some of their other uh, products that they they certainly do dominate in. And in Europe, they're saying that they're using their search, um, the fact that we just Google things, uh, they're they're using that to sell more products by pushing up things that they have an interest in up to the top. And so the, the Europeans have have find Google, right? And so we'll see we'll see how that plays out in the future, right? So it could not always obvious what is um, a monopoly or not. It's it's up to that's why lawyers get paid a lot of money to to sort of th think through these things, and economists have a hand in it too. Uh, so let's go over the monopoly types. Now your book uh, frames this a little bit differently than me, so there's there's differences in how economists think about this. It's essentially the same, just slightly different vocabulary. Um, about what's going on. So, you know, you may have been to Disneyland, the happiest place on earth, most expensive place on earth, right? So, uh, there's if you want to rent a stroller, a wheelchair, or can, you know, one of those little scooter, electric scooter things, Disneyland has a geographic monopoly. Once you enter their park, the prices are higher, people don't buy as much. Uh, that's because the only people selling anything are um, the Disney uh, companies, right? So, there's going to be that higher price, that monopoly price is in play there. So anytime there's a fence around something within the within the fenced-in area, you may run into monopoly pricing. Okay, basically just means uh, there's only one firm in a certain area, so could be a fence around it, might not be a fence around it too. Um, this happens a lot in small towns. There might be one grocery store, say in, in Rio Rico or something, uh, and if I'm running that single grocery store, I'm I'm going to set my prices a little bit higher. Um, to take into account that I don't have any competition, right? But as soon as I set it too high, I'll attract competition and the monopoly goes away. Uh, I have a lot of students who want to start up Mexican food restaurants, and I think that's wonderful. You should definitely invite me to your grand opening. I, I like uh, I like food, um, but you shouldn't. Maybe you should maybe consider not opening one in Tucson, right? Very competitive environment. You might be better off to be the only. Sonoran style Mexican food place in Boise, Idaho, or something like that, right? You might, might want to look outside, right? You can call it a bistro or something like that. You can raise your prices, make a little bit more profit because you'll have a geographic monopoly, okay? Um, this happens a lot with mechanics. If you've broken down in a small town, you may pay a slightly higher price, right? Because there may not be uh, any competition or a tow truck, right? There's only one tow truck out in the middle of nowhere. So that's a geographic monopoly. Next. Uh, many cities have a monopoly on uh, the water supply, like like us. Right. So the theory behind this is, let's uh, make sure the prices are low and the quality is good. And in Tucson, this works out okay. Uh, my water bill you know, steadily goes up, but uh, you know the, the water quality here in Tucson not bad. Right. Now in Flint, Michigan, this uh, is a famous case of it not working. Right. And so this picture here, this is the uh, this is the tape on the water bottle, but this this uh, yellowy water here. Uh, that's Flint tap water and that's Detroit tap water. So it doesn't always work um, the uh, the government monopoly. Okay, so we got Tucson Water as an example, Tucson Electric Power, the post office. These are all government ownership um, of a of a private firm, right? Or some kind of charter, like in the case of Tucson Electric uh, Power, right? So the government steps in and says we're going to monopolize the market. You don't see too much of this in the United States, but it is. Uh, somewhat common in other places, right? So Pemex is a famous monop government run monopoly in, in Mexico. They're the only company that can pump oil and um, the quality isn't quite as good. Uh, the Mexican government sets the price pretty low so there's not a monopoly price but what's, what happens is it's, it's really hard to get rid of this monopoly, right? And you think about where would you rather buy gas? It's a little more expensive here in the United States, however uh, I'd rather buy it here. It's going to keep my car on the run on the road longer, right? Another example would be the British Health Service, right? So they have a, a monopolized uh, insurance uh, uh, health healthcare in in Britain. So um, another example of that, of that, right? So it's, it's what some people want us to explore here in the United States, right? Okay, next one. Uh, there really aren't very many operating systems. Chances are you're watching this on a Windows. Uh, machine, maybe you have an, maybe you have a Mac. Uh, these are the two big ones. This one's over over eighty percent. And then uh, Google came along and created Android. This is Linux, uh, but essentially there really aren't very many. 
and there aren't very many because it would be very expensive um, to produce one. And then you'd have to get consumers like me. I'm used to using Windows. I've used it for forever, and it'd be hard to get me to, to, to go to something else, right? And Google's trying their hardest, right? They've got the Chromebooks and, and whatnot, so we see a little bit, and maybe this isn't a monopoly, right? But um, anyhow, this next one is called a technological monopoly. The book's going to call this another form of government monopoly, and it really is. Uh, if you produce something in the United States, a, a product, you can patent it and you get a temporary monopoly on it. Okay, So make sure if you come up with some kind of great idea before you take that product to market, you patent the idea, uh, whatever the product is, and uh, that way you get a monopoly on it. You can make more money. Okay, Famous story that the guys that started uh, uh, or ma made a version of the first spreadsheet they um, didn't patent their idea and, and Lotus and IBM and other, other others came along and so they should be billionaires but they didn't patent their idea and it was, it was taken by somebody else. The other one for artistic creation is going to be a copyright. You get a monopoly on your, your creation, your movie, your music, uh, your song, anything like that. You could also just keep it secret. So the famous example here is Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola is a trade secret. Nobody knows what that is. Uh, eventually patents and copyrights run out okay, and they enter the public domain so Coke doesn't want that to happen so Coke just keeps it as a secret right so secret recipes um, so it's you know it says due to technology it might be a secret right uh, might be a copyright for for Microsoft's case it's a little of both right they know what the software code is you don't um, but they also have a, a patent on the on the software code and a lot of that's copyrighted so we see this a lot in software the biotech firms are now doing this artistic firms, this is your monopoly here, okay? And this this is sometimes thought of as the good kind of monopoly because if we allow patents and copyrights, uh, we'll get more creation and we'll get more uh, more products and more innovation for the consumer, okay? Uh, so those are some examples. Last one, there's um, people that think in our country and, and they're not, um, you know, they're not wrong, it's just a different way of thinking about it. Uh, that Walmart ruin, has ruined small towns, right? The main street, uh, small towns. And so think about it. If there's a mom and pop store in a small town uh, they, that sells products and then Walmart moves in, the reason Walmart can beat them is because Walmart, you know, could get their products at a lower marginal cost and a lower average total cost, right? So they benefit from economies of scale, whereas the mom and pop does not, okay? So um, we've seen this before, right? Here's the short run average total cost curves, three different combinations. Uh, mom and pop has to stay on this one because they're small potatoes. And then the uh, Walmart can get to these other ones and, and reduce their costs, right? So this one's called natural monopoly. It's the firm that can supply at the lowest cost than the competition, right? And for a long time, this was AT&T, more on AT&T later. Um, this would be a good example uh, if, if you think Walmart is a monopoly in a rural area then uh, then they, they benefit from economies of scale and this is how they got their monopoly. Good one uh, here in Tucson would be Suntran Bus. You could start your own bus company but it would be very costly and you, you really wouldn't be able to cover your fixed costs in a long time so it wouldn't, wouldn't behoove you to do that. You couldn't beat Suntran on costs. You would lose and so uh, Suntran has that busing monopoly. So this is uh, the example here. Okay. Uh, in other classes, it may, it may be called horizontal integration, right? So as firms buy up other firms, they're able to take advantage of those lower costs, get, get the competition out of the way, and they're golden. Okay. Uh, so AT&T uh, was a natural monopoly. It was the only um, telephone service in the country. And uh, this, this goes back, uh, you know, way back to the beginning of the telephone. It was very expensive to, you know, uh, get the telephone lines on those poles and all that. The government came in in the early 80s and said, we're going to break it up. That's what you see here. And they broke it up into these regional um, companies, right? So if you're from California, you've seen uh, uh, Pacific Bell. And if you're from Arizona, you know, a number of years ago it was U.S. West. Then later it became Quest. And now it's CenturyLink. Uh, these other bells, and slowly what's been happening, AT&T has been buying them back up, okay? So uh, this is a good uh, little practice here for the, the homework, and uh, I want you to stop the video here, pause the video, I'll give you the answers in one second, so go ahead and pause the video.
Okay, I'm back. So the first one is a geographic monopoly. Uh, the Harkins movie theater is the only theater selling popcorn inside that movie theater. Interstate highways, those are government mon monopolies. They, they own them. They let you drive on them for quote-unquote free. Only mechanic in a small town is a geographic monopoly. Number four is a natural monopoly. Number five, a uh, natural monopoly. So there's one Walmart in that small town. Vending machines over at Pima West. So the vending machine's a little bit harder. So they got a they got a, um, a license from Pima College to put the put the vending machines in there. Other companies would like to, but they're not allowed to. So technically, this is a government-run um, monopoly that created the geographic monopoly. So sometimes they work together. Number seven, that's the Amtrak. That's government-run monopoly. Number eight, this is a uh, natural monopoly. Search engines, probably a technological monopoly. They they have the technology. Uh, you could say that there's some natural monopoly tendencies thrown in there because it, Google can do it so cheaply. And gasoline in Mexico or Venezuela, those are also government monopolies. So this has been the different types of monopolies and what a monopoly is. A little bit more complicated than, uh, than what you might think initially.